the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. That was uh, Aretha Franklin with Baby I Love You from 1967. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music on a Saturday morning. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Joe. How are you doing? I'm all right. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye then. We'll T- see you next week. See Thanks you for next listening. Week. Thanks Bye. a lot. Bye. Oh, that was quick. Was that, it? that was felt f- really, really flew that by. It was a fast show this it week. Was. It was. You can went, tell when it's going well because it, it was really, good, man. It, it went, really whizzes it by. It went well. That clever thing you said about about good morning, saying good morning to you yeah, when you that asked was me. Smart. I just came right back with it Did because you? I thought when you it's asked me, now, isn't it? When you said to me, mm-hmm. "Good morning." Mm-hmm. I just sort of thought, what would be a funny thing to say? And I just said, good morning right back, but in kind of a upbeat Yeah, that's way. why you get the laughters. Yeah, that's true, they're isn't it? They're laughters. They're much heavier. They've got an L. They're, they're, you could really do some damage with yeah. them. Yeah. So this morning, listeners, we've got great music coming up, haven't we? We've got some uh, terrific free plays. <laughs> and of course, uh, <laughs> did that all, not sound sincere? Yeah, it's just desperate when you when you look through the playlist and you say, oh, yeah. look at the music. Well, We're going to be Some people some listen for the music. I, of course they do. We got some like Jesus and Mary Chain. Have we? We got some Santo Gold. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. What else? Some Ding Ding. Oh. oh. Have, you got, these, have uh. you got the Ting Ting's album yet? No. Come on. No. Granddad? I'm I'm past that kind of thing. Are you really? Yeah, I don't buy things just because the mags tell me to. Yeah. I don't even buy the mags, so no one tells me to. Really? Yeah. You, you're missing out on the mags. <laughs> it's all about mags from Aha. Is it? It's amazing. Mags. He's very handsome. He's an extraordinary piece of work, isn't it? But seriously, a serious mm. tease, though, for later on in the show, we are going to be joined by... Has he won any Oscars? No, but he's won a Cernus. He's won a Cernus. Yeah, he's a Sir, so you have, do have to respect that. He's I a call knight. him Sir Roger. Th- it's yeah. nice to have a knight in the big British castle. It is. Sir Roger Moore is going to be on the show. We don't normally have guests on this program, of course, but we are bending the rules for Sir Roger. Yep, it's the only time you'll see him or hear him in the media this month. That's true. And it's weird because he's got an autobiography out, but he's yeah. chosen not to publicise it. He's not going on any at shows. At all. This is an exclusive. He has not been on <laughs> any programmes at all, apart from this one. So it's quite a big deal, I think you'll agree. No, he has obviously been on various shows. What? But it, it, it's gonna, he has. I'm afraid I saw him on, on Paul O'Grady. Oh, for goodness sake. Uh, but it's going to be very different. Is because, it? Because we're hopeless. Yeah, that's true, and isn't it? all the shows he's been on before <laughs> have had professional presenters yeah, on them. Yes, I forgot. He hasn't yet stumbled into an arena like this. No, but we're going to be brilliantly professional. I've read his entire biog. Well done. Yeah, got all the factoids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, I bet Ross and uh, Savage... He's not called Savage anymore, is he? Lily, yeah, he is, yeah. Uh, I bet they haven't read the book. No, exactly. Probably not. Ross can't read. He can't read. Can he can't read. He can't see past uh, all his piles of money. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to be compiling a list of questions to ask Roger throughout Are the you? show. Yeah. I was thinking maybe listeners could help me with it. I'm going to be much more f- uh, freeform than that. Are you? Yeah. I'm not. He's going to prefer my technique. I don't think so. Cause... Uh, I really prefer the tall one. I liked it when uh, the short, tubbier one asked me whether I liked to Roger more. <laughs> the tall one would make an excellent James Bond. <laughs> uh, the shorter, more intelligent one would make a wonderful villain. Yes, that's fair enough. I'm happy with that. <laughs> that's something to look forward to. Okay, let's have some more music now. Here is, here are, here they are. It's Good. the Killers Good. with well Human. Done. Well, I don't, the two both. are not mutually exclusive, yeah. are they? It's fine to do both. You can be human and be a dancer. If you're a ferret and a dancer, it's more unusual, but it's not unheard of. More lucrative. It's much more lucrative. Mm. You get invited on all kinds of programs. Mm. It's the dancing ferret man. But, you know, the dancing human, it's not such a big deal. So uh, there you go. That's uh, we, We've explained it for the killers. Uh, that should be the end of that problem. And I don't want to hear that song ever again. Now, we should explain. I'm joking. I love yeah, the song. It's a great it's song. It's a great song. Uh, the killers there with human released in the year 2008. Oh, what a, that's a vintage year. In the month of October. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I only just managed to get that information out. Well done. Um, yes, uh, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We've got an apology to make, listeners, oh, because no. uh, of Song Wars. We felt that because Sir Roger was coming in, and we planned to play him 
our Quantum of Solace songs from several months back. It would be too cluttered a show if we uh, played our spooky song That's song true, yeah. this week. Overload. Plus, we thought it would give us an extra week to fine-tune them, because it's not an easy... Once again, we haven't chosen a particularly easy task. I feel it's too broad. Have this, you had any initial week. thoughts about spooky I've, la- I've laid the music track down. Have you? I just haven't approached the lyrics. And is the mood of the... Can I ask you, is the mm. mood of the music itself spooky? Uh, well, yes. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I've gone for a spooky sound. It's scary, I tell you, when I Oof. play it back. I get scared. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you what milieu? You know you can't, genre? because I think it's gonna yeah. give you an unfair tactical advantage. I bet it's... You know knowledge is power. Is in it? The, in, the, in, in the high-stakes world of Song Wars. Damn it. In the nuclear <laughs> confrontation that is Song Wars. Yeah. Any kind of information is... Did I say that already? Power... <laughs> <laughs> you did, yeah. Yeah, I'm just We've covered that repeating already. it to stress it. <laughs> so yes, no, no um, new songs this week. But of course, a reminder of our. Uh, quant- Are we going to play the whole? Well, I guess we'll have to play yes. the whole of the songs to Roger, yes. right? I, I guess Sir Roger will be baffled. Yeah. By them, he knows that we're going to do this. Is that correct? He doesn't think that. I'm worried that he's going to think that we're just going to chat to him about his book. Uh, which we're not really going to I'm going to chat to him. Are this you? Book's quite interesting in a couple of respects. I've, I've got those questions. Don't worry about that. Yeah. If he looks, uh, just give me a wink or a nod or a sign. <laughs> if you think the interview should backpedal into, like, Radio 4 mode. Mm-hmm. And I'll, I'll take care of that. I'm not really worried about it. I don't really want to talk to him about it. <laughs> There's interesting things I'm in sure the book. I'm sure it's a fact. I'm not, I'm not dissing the book. It's great. It's really good. A little bit of a... Uh, he went to school pretty much opposite where you live. Is that not interesting? In South London. Yeah. Yeah, that is very interesting. To you and him, but I'll nobody ask, else. <laughs> ask him about that, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is interesting. You're right. Okay, um, now we've got a, a free play for you now, listeners. This is my choice, and it's by Randy Crawford. You like a bit of Randy, Joe? Yep, do I like, do. like uh, getting Randy every now and again? Yes. Um, well, she was on Radio 4 this week. She? Uh, yeah. yeah. I've been listening to a lot of Radio 4 uh, recently and uh, enjoying it. I don't know why... Exactly. Oh, it's because it's good, I suppose, but it's, it's made the feel... soothing tone as well. It's the soothing tone. Yes. I've been listening to Woman's Hour. I enjoy Woman's Hour very much. And Randy was on Woman's Hour. She was charming. Mm. She was absolutely charming. She's a professional. Person. She really is. She just sounded delightful. And uh, the guy that wrote Street Life was on there with mm. her. I didn't realize that Street Life is such a saucy song. It's all mm. about, like, mm. chaps um, with cocaine spoons and being filthy and... Oof. Mm. But she sings it so sweetly, you wouldn't have an idea. Anyway, I'm not going to play Street Life. I'm going to play this song, which I, which I always thought was very Bond-like. One day I'll fly away, you know? And I forgot when they played a little snippet on Radio 4 how much I love this song. Randy Crawford with One Day I'll Fly Away. That's very good. DJ Format with Separated at Birth. Is that a new song, James, our producer? It's from 2005. Oh. Yeah. The olden days. Mm. Uh, well, that was uh, very enjoyable. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Do you uh, read about the spammers this week, mate? No, mate. What's that news? Caught a couple of spammers responsible for a third of the world's spam. No. Why are you saying it in an Australian accent? Guess because they're Australian, they're Aussies. They were Australian oh, men. No. Uh, although they were operating in Australia and New Zealand, they didn't pin down whether they were uh, Aussies or Kiwis. But I would say they were almost they certainly were, Aussies. They were operating in New Zealand as well. Yeah, uh, they were op- operating in New Zealand. You see, that's more <laughs> South African. <laughs> South African, isn't it? Like? What is the difference between an Australian <laughs> accent and a New Zealand accent? And a Kiwi accent. I think my only frame of reference is uh, Flight of the Concords yes, and Reese Darby. Now he's. From New Zealand? Yeah. And he... New Zealand, to me, seems very slightly breathy. Yes. Secretive and sort of punchy. That's just right? the way that Reece Starby talks, though. <laughs> well, that's what I'm... <laughs> whereas Australian's just a bit more uh, broad like that. Exactly, yeah. They're just Is about to right? punch you. Yes. Everything's quite exciting in New Zealand. Yeah. And more breathy. Well, and I, earnest. A, a, as a lazy generalisation, I always characterise uh, the Kiwis as like the Canadians yeah. to the uh, Australians, Americans. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You know that we're slightly obsessed with the uh, accents and, and actors doing them badly in films. Mm. I thought it could be a competition. I, you're not allowed competitions at the at the big British castle, but if we were, you could have people phone in and they'd pretend to be a particular nationality, and we'd have to guess whether they were putting on an accent or not. Right. It's like an accent test. We can do that, can't we? Can we do that? As long as we don't give them prizes or offer prizes, isn't that the thing? Yeah. We can do that. Let's do that today. Can we do that? Yes. Would it be worth doing? Yeah. Well, let's try it. (laughs) So what are you asking people to do? If you think 
Oh, I don't know. What am I asking people yeah, to do? Yeah, you haven't thought it through, have you? <laughs> I haven't thought it through. That's fair enough. You were talking off the Let cuff. Let me give it a little bit of a think, thinkle through. Mm. I'll think it through. Pop it in the think box. And then we'll see whether it's worth flying. The, my problem is that how would you know whether the person was lying or not? You'd have to just depend on them being truthful. Howard the Duck. How would you know? Howard the Duck. <laughs> You're <laughs> distracting me now. Sorry, I love man. that film. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about that. No, we'll talk about it later. That's good about the spam, though. Yeah, sorry, man. Third wow. of the world spam they got rid of in one fell swoop. I mean, that's progress. That gave me real cheer this week what sort of spam were they sending was it to do with it, wink, winky winky size winkle wonkles yeah it was winky size and the drugs was it, and the viagra uh, discount meds exactly exactly right. and it's two guys really at the top of this operation they've got uh, you know they've got other people mm. and they've got lots of robot machines it's all about what did they call them bots. F uh, web bots or yeah. net bots yeah. or bot net nets bots. bot nets bot nets why not net bots why is it bot net Anyway, they've sorted all the botnets out and they're killing them all and it's like... Kill the botnets. It's like Clone Wars out there. Oh, it's exciting. Except much more exciting. Uh, so right now, here's a bit more music before the news, ladies and gentlemen. Don't know if you've heard of this artist. He's a young ruffian. He's mixing it all up. He's a white boy, but he's got uh, kind of crazy hip-hop style grooves. I mean, that sounds unbelievable, doesn't it, Joe? It sounds wrong. It shouldn't be allowed. He's called Beck. What? And uh, this song is called Loser. Mmm, delightful. Ironical. That's Beck with Loser. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Time now for the news, read by Claire Ronakis. Credence Clearwater Revival with Bad Moon Rising. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Always reminds me, is it over the closing? What, where is it in American Werewolf in London? That when they're in the shower, song. I think, isn't it? Is it the dirty scene? It's That's why scene. it's so reminiscent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Evocative. It's burned into your brain. Of Jenny Agata's boobs. Her lovely, lovely boobs. Mm. She's a <clears> someone <throat> who... Uh, uh, is the object of a lot of adolescent fantasy, wouldn't you Well, think? she was around the time, because that was a very powerful uh, scene of um, physical intimacy between two consenting <laughs> human beings. <laughs> when previously one had maybe only seen her in the railway yeah, children. Plus that was when video VHS first came to Britain and American Wealth in London was one of the first uh, movies to be released on VHS and mm. there was no certification. So anyone who was a kid around those days would have seen all sorts of forbidden things. Beautiful things. Including Jenny Agata's areas. Pop knobs. Her agua. Have you seen um, Ra Railway Children recently? No. That film is hard to watch. That doesn't have any scenes of physical intimacy between adults. No, not really, no. It's got her waving her pants in yeah. the air to what's, stop the train. What's the girl with the um, fairly large teeth called? Titty. No, not Titty. <laughs> Swallows and Amazons. Is she called Titty? There's lots of books where they've got, uh, you know, of that period where they've got funny names like that. Yes, yes. No, she's not called that. Bunty. Bunty, something like. Well, she's got... Um, Frolica. Frolica. <laughs> <laughs> come, for, come in for tea, Frolica. Come on. And you, Titty. And Bunty. Sit down. Waffles. Stop Waffles. That. That's the dog. No, it's the sun. Is it? Waffles. <laughs> waffles. <laughs> Stop it, waffles. Birds, I potato waffles. Oh, waffles. Sort of name Birds is that. Style. Anyway, listeners, we were going to have a go at this thing, right? It's not a competition because uh, competitions we are We were equal. going to. We are going to. We've decided to try this. Yeah, right. So well, do you want to explain or yeah. shall I? What we'd like you to do, listeners, is help us test our ear for accents. Uh, we want you to email us at adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk or text us on 64046 if you either have a genuine, very strong foreign accent or you reckon you're so good at faking a foreign accent that if you speak to us in that accent, we won't be able to tell that you're pretending. And what we're going to do, our producers here, uh, James and Claire, are going to take your calls or your uh, they're going to phone you up basically and they go to assess uh whether your accent is sufficiently strong you have to be straight with them yeah 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 you have to tell them like okay i can do a i can do a good uh south african accent so here it is and if they're sufficiently impressed you'll go through and we'll end up with two uh real well, ones no we don't know we'll, we'll just end up with with maybe hopefully three callers we'll three go callers. through them pretty quickly but uh, we'll test our ability to tell whether an accent is, is real or fake. We may get you to say particular sentences, right. uh, engage you in some kind of provocative or testing conversation. We should think of like a, you up. Of, a, of a standard sentence then, right? Yeah, we'll like do a little a bit control of control sentence. But in the short term, if you think you've either got a really good strong foreign accent or you can fake it amazingly mm. well, 
Or it doesn't have to be amazingly well. It would be quite amusing if it was badly. Well, it's up to you what you... Yeah. Could, yeah like. Then uh, send your name and phone number right now to adamandjoe.6music, that's the number six, not the word six, at bbc.co.uk, or text us on 64046, and we will call you back uh, if our producer select you obviously that's only if you're listening to this show live <laughs> yeah if you're listening again then this is in the past it's all it happened in the past uh okay more music now um it's time for santo gold with say aha is this actually about aha i can't remember let's find out uh let's find out this is santo gold Santa Gold with Say Aha. Uh, no, it's not about Aha, is it? No, it's a song for dentists. Have you seen the um, version of Take On Me on, yeah. the, on YouTube? It's a new YouTube craze, literal videos, right? Where right. you uh, get an existing video, you remix the sound to make the lyrics state literally what's happening in the picture mm. and it's very effective, isn't it? Yeah, it's very enjoyable. It's brilliant. That Someone's video. done it with the Take On Me video. Yeah. And uh, it works a treat. He's done a good job of like doing the redoing the track as well. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's got hold of an instrumental. I wonder where you get hold of them things. Uh, you reckon he's got? I think maybe he was. I assumed that he'd done it himself. No. Oh, re-recorded the entire track. Yeah. Mm, uh, maybe. maybe I, I don't know. It might be insane there. There used to be years ago. I remember seeing on Tomorrow's World a machine that could filter out the lyrics of the vocals. vocals. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, you can still do that. Can you do that on yeah, a yeah. on a normal home computer? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, it's a bit of software you have to get hold of. Is it? Yeah. I'd like that software. Well, you can probably buy it. I'm going to. So, did you see in the news, Joe Cornish, the deadly spiders? No. Did you see the deadly spider thing? Oh, I read that new types of insects were coming into Britain because of the global warming. Al Gore. Yeah. He's shipping them over. He's packaged them up in a big crate. Yeah. And sent them over on a weak bit of rope. Thanks a so lot, Al Gore. So they snap and it smashes open. Yeah, thanks very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Al Gore. He has them on. He's, his body is full of spiders. <laughs> Did you know that? If you look up close, his skin undulates because he's just full of... He's not a man. He's just a million spiders in like, the form of a man. Like Oogie Boogie in uh, yeah. Nightmare Before he, Christmas. Is that what happens? He's great. Yeah, he's just a big sack. And when the sack comes undone... There you go. It, was he called Oogie Boogie? Something like that. I don't know. I don't like that film. It's good, man. What's that? What's that? That What's drives this? me insane. <laughs> I've rediscovered it since it. Uh, since having children. You really? Know, I watched it again, and it's really not Is that... Is it good? It's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, I digress. The scary spiders, though. Ooh. I mean, have you ever been bitten by a spider? No, but uh, when I was in America recently, somebody spotted... Uh, potted? Spotted out... They what? potted a little? Pointed out a black widow spider mm. on the streets of L.A. just hanging by an electricity box. He said, yeah. hey, that's a black widow spider. Watch out Oof. when you go into the Californian countryside. And lo and behold, I was swimming in a swimming pool, yeah. working, obviously, <laughs> still in the pool. Working, still yeah. working, yeah, in the pool. And uh, there was a black widow spider hanging in the corner of the pool. Just having a cocktail? Yeah. What? In a little inflatable chair. Yeah. And uh, that was terrifying. And he was saying, I got a great idea. It's about this man, and he can climb up walls, and he c You get where I'm going? Spider-Man, yeah. No, Man-Spider. Man-Spider? Yes. That's very different. <laughs> <laughs> it's frightening, though, isn't it? And we must all be careful in uh in our daily lives That's to a, watch thank out you. for the new spiders very good watch uh, out for the new spiders right. there's, there's a new spider. spider maybe they should launch spider magazine mm -hmm. the bbc's spider magazine it's all the latest spiders uh a guide to them what's <laughs> what to be afraid of a poster uh, of the new spiders interview with old spiders what they think of the new spiders yeah spider facts <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. BBC Spider Magazine. In BD, BBC Shops Now. B B B BDC. B um, B that's a very good idea. Have you ever seen a, the effects of a, of a bad spider bite on YouTube? <laughs> you should. <laughs> it's amazing. No. Look for you. If, uh, uh, don't really, look for... Really? Is that true? Oh, it's amazing. Because presumably it doesn't... It's not just a sort of boil on the skin. It's the person going into some kind yeah. of shock. No, 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 no. It's not, it's not that. It's, it's oh, in that in, case, I'm not interested. In, no, in the States, right, is, there's a type of... I think it's called a common brown... Not called a common brown, but something the brown spider. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in the Midwest, if you get bitten by one of these things... Obviously, the thing to do is to go into hospital, but some of these folks don't have medical insurance, right? So there's mm, videos of themselves. Big issue in the election. Right. There's some of these uh, folks without medical insurance treating their own uh, orange-sized really? swellings on oh their neck God. from the spider bite. Puncturing them. It is unbelievable. No, draining them. Draining them. Oh, my God. And I'm not recommending you check these out. People if you... are having breakfast, man. People are well, currently exactly. sitting in front of... Uh, 
what are they grapefruits yeah which look exactly like <laughs> orange sized spiders if you've worms. got a, if you've got a tough constitution right check these out otherwise do not because it's it's the most unbelievable thing you'll ever see oh my God. <laughs> listen it's your free play right now joe what is it got? yeah i can't help st- i can't stop thinking about do you like seeing that kind bursting of stuff? the bubos it's i mean this is the king of all the bubo bursting, bursting of the bubos <laughs> yeah you search for spider bite uh this is a sort of relaxing song just to ease us out of that trauma uh-huh. uh it's bon iver it's from their current album it's quite long and it starts with pretty much silence and just a man banging on his acoustic guitar so don't don't get worried that'll be mr Iver himself it picks up and it's really beautiful and it has an amazing use of an sort of uh, r&b style electronic vocoder mm. in it but very subtly used mm. and interestingly combined with folk vocals oh, this I is love wolves by bon Iver. pulp with babies he's a national treasure of course jarvis wouldn't you say Joe i'd Paul? say he's national treasure he's too a national treasure and he is going to be sitting in for stephen lazy merchant uh who is away on holiday inverted commas uh, we never do that kind of thing, do we? We're always here. We're always on the job. We, but, ne- we would never yeah. skip off. That was a session recorded for the John Peel Show on Radio 1 on the 30th of May, 92. And Jarvis is going to be filling in for Stephen uh, Sunday week. I think this weekend it's going to be Keris Matthews. Lovely Keris. And as we heard in that trail That's before... 16 years ago. 16 years. Isn't that extraordinary? Yeah. time oh, just, time flies. Time just Whee! refuses to stand still, doesn't it? Damn it. As my, um, body keeps reminding me. (laughs) Well, let's not go into that now. (laughs) Um, are we ready to try this experimental non-competition event? Yeah, let's try this. It might be a bit raggedy, listeners, so So if you've just tuned in, this is the idea. We reckon we can spot a fake accent a mile off. Uh, that's the premise of this Mm. segment. So we've invited listeners who either have genuine accents... Or think they can do an impeccable pretend accent. And we don't know which, obviously. We've invited them to phone in, speak to us in their accent, and we have to tell whether they're genuinely foreign or pretending to be foreign. Now, we don't have a control sentence yet, do we? We don't have a control sentence, but let's... we just chat to them generally? Just chat a bit, yeah, and see what happens. We've got Francesca on the line. Hello, Francesca. Hello. Now, how are you doing, Francesca? I'm doing fine. Um, and I'm what? in yeah. South East London. Right. And where are you from, Francesca? Am I allowed to tell you? Well, um, well, that's well, an you interesting have to, question, isn't you it? You have to tell us, like, it has to fit in with the accent you're doing, whether it's real or Because or obviously, if, if, if were, your, were you to be pretending to be foreign, then it would immediately give it away if you told us you were from somewhere different than your yeah. accent. Do you see what we're saying? Yeah. So I'll ask you okay. the question again. Where are you from, Francesca? I'm from Italy. Italy. Italy? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's happened to your accent then? <laughs> I lost it on the way <laughs> to England. Oh, there's a little bit of it there. You sound more Irish to me. I thought you were Irish because we were testing the line just before you came on there. Yeah. And uh, you sounded a little bit Irish. And I was speculating that maybe an Irish accent is something that a lot of women uh, seem to enjoy doing. Do you know what I mean? Like right. in the old, when I was at school, a lot of girls would do an, an American accent because that was fashionable at the time. Mm. Well, and yeah, people do think I'm American as well sometimes, um, but I, I yes. haven't been trying. Do you know any poetry off by heart? Um, or the lyrics from a song or something? Or pick up a magazine. Is there a magazine around there? Hang on. Um, as long as it's a family I have a book. magazine. I have a book. Oh, go on then. Read, read a few sentences from the book. As long Random as it's in, in no way um, Leave out sweary the filth. or yeah. dirty. It's okay. a family show. Or political. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a bit depressing. Uh, that okay, was a, the depressing book we do. <laughs> There's nothing more sad and wasteful than a room full of intelligent and highly paid people waiting for a chance to attack something the speaker has said. Okay, six well... Hats that's good, Francesca. Thank you. Are you just getting to the six hats bit? <laughs> <laughs> I think that accent is real, but I think it's slightly, uh, with all with great respect, uh, sort of mongrel. Polluted. It, 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 it sounds like a. And don't respond to this, Francesca. I'm talking to Adam here. <laughs> is uh, I think it sounds like a mix between Irish and Italian. Have you got any uh, uh, Irish roots there, Francesca? I have. Yes. 
so so are we now telling her to to tell us uh okay. well yes 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 okay now be be honest with us it's n- it's now time to reveal whether so my, my guess is that she is genuinely irish with a bit of italian What's your guess, Adam Buxton? I'm Italian I'm, with a bit of Irish. Oh, she jumped right on in there. <laughs> she's Italian with a bit, but that, there no, you go. But there's no trace of Italian in your accent. But no, but it's because she said earlier on, yeah, that she was Italian. That was what gave me the clue. Right. <laughs> she, she earlier on she said I'm Italian, right? And I picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> and I followed, you know, yeah. that's my genius. I think I so understand. there we go. We've rumbled you, Francesca. Uh, yeah, that was quite easy, wasn't it? Yeah, it was quite easy, but but well done. Uh, surviving life with that accent. Do you find it gets you into difficulties? Um, I was asked once if I was Chinese, and my boyfriend say, says I sound like Yoda. That's a difficulty. That's two difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> well done struggling through. You've got a nice voice, though, Francesca. Thank you very much indeed Thank for, you calling for calling us. Calling. Thank uh, you. Have a good weekend. We've got Dave now. Hey, Dave, are you on the line? I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is more like it. Dave, have you, so got, da- have you got a magazine handy or something, or a book? I have many magazines handy here. <laughs> 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 that might be a real accent, and we're just laughing <laughs> at it. not be. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, talk, talk to us, Dave. Read from something clean, please. I can talk about the clash. <laughs> hey, I can't Go on, let's talk that. about the clash. <laughs> What's they your... were not the most consistent of live bands. For every clash show that blazed into life, <laughs> there'd be another where the band acted like individuals. Are you a and film? Are you a, are you a film actor? <laughs> because I am not. No, you're not. No. You should be. You really should be. You could be in films <laughs> with that accent. You could play like a Polish gangster, or is that supposed to be Polish? It's Germanic. It is Eastern European, right? Where, where are you from, sir? I uh, aren't you meant to guess? No, uh, you, now he's a, now he's from place? Germany. He can't. He can't. He <laughs> doesn't even know where he's is from. Is that the name of a town? <laughs> what What did you say? <laughs> can't you guess? He said. Oh, I thought it was. Uh, yes, we guess that you're from um, either Germany or Poland. Which... Or Streatham. <laughs> <laughs> Most I'm actually likely. from Liverpool. Uh, yes. Now, what's your real accent, Dave? Because we're guessing yeah, that... my real accent. There you go. Oh, that's good. Dave, Are you, you sure that's your real accent, though? Um, not really, no. Dave, um, re- read to us in your uh, real accent, just with your normal voice for a second. Okay. They were not the most consistent of live bands. For every class show that blazed into life, there'd be another where the band acted like individuals. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you really brought that sentence alive. <laughs> Thank you. You should do Jack and Ori. Dave, that's great, man. What do you do for a living, Dave? I'm guessing um, it isn't acting. I actually write radio commercials. Ah, do you write? We don't have any commercials, otherwise we'd get you to write uh, some. Yeah. But uh, do you ever use your brilliant uh, accent in public <laughs> i yes i've been arrested on a number of occasions <laughs> but do you do you really th- do you really think that's quite a good accent you've got there i do i think it could um it could open doors for me occasionally do you think that's your best of all the countries and the accents in the world do you think that's your strongest one uh, say yes south <laughs> african, <not bad. laughs> give us a blast of your south african come on hello edson and joe Hello there, Dave. How are you doing, mate? Now, you, that's Australian. Just Australian. Right here. I've lost it. on the Adam and Joe show. <laughs> okay, listen, Dave, thank you so much uh, for calling. What's your weekend looking like? Are you doing anything fun? Uh, little, little radio yeah, question. Yeah, just taking the, the little kiddles and the missus into town for, um, for coffee and toast. Coffee oh, and toast. That sounds lovely. Good coffee times. Toast. We'll see you there. Thank you for yeah. calling, Dave. That's, no a, that's a very good accent. Well done. We look forward to seeing you in some major Hollywood feature films. That was very good. Thank you very much, Dave and Francesca. So what do you reckon, Joe? Has that got legs? Uh, I, I, uh, yeah, I think it might do. I think it's important that from the moment you come on air, you're talking in the accent. Yeah. And you stay in that accent and stay in either a world of, of, of deception right. or truth. Do you know what I mean? And, until such time as we ask you to be completely truthful with us. What I'm saying is you can toy with us, you can mess with us. Sure. Until we ask you the, the absolute question at I mean, which point you have to be It honest. makes it very difficult, though, if we're asking them personal information in character, do you know what I mean? I, th- I, I don't think we should ask them, like, where they're from and stuff like that, because then it's too complicated. We should just stick to them reading something out of a book, don't you think? I don't think we should underestimate our listeners. I think they can create you fake. You see, I was thinking fake. that we should <laughs> <laughs> underestimate them. They can create fake backstories for themselves. <laughs> That's because true. Because... The- 
you know, on the basis of those two calls, yeah. we got them both instantly. Yeah. From the moment Dave uttered a syllable, it was clear he was not from Germany. Oh, Poland. And uh, Francesca sort of gave it away in her preamble. So if you think you can do better than either of those two, send us an email, adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk with your phone number, and we might try a couple more later in the show. Uh, right now, here, here is um, Blur. Man, I heard this song the other day. I forgot how amazingly good it was you know do you want do you want to hear a little slightly sad name droppy story go on then. um once a long time ago joe when we were doing our tv show and things uh were very exciting uh, i went to the groucho club you've heard of the groucho club yes and this is back in the day when keith allen and alex james <laughs> would sort of uh, be kings kings of the groucho club and they were just there all the time and so I went there, and there was Alex James, and it was very exciting. He was sat with Craig Cash from uh, the Royal, Royal Family. Family. Mm. And um, uh, I sort of sidled over and uh, insinuated myself into their conversation. Oh, God. And they were talking about what the best single ever recorded was. Brilliant. Check and checks. I thought, oh, I can join in with this conversation. And Alex was saying um, maybe, maybe it was Ashes to Ashes by David Bowie. I think he was saying that. I can't remember. Uh, but then, and this was around the time that Beetlebum had just come out, I think. Guess what I said? I think maybe Beetlebum is one <laughs> of the best ever, Alex. I love you. I didn't actually say I love you, but that was clearly the implication. What did he say to that? I th he told me to F off. Did he? Yes, he did. Good man. In, in sort of, uh, you know, in a friendly way, but in a fairly emphatic way. <laughs> <laughs> because he had correctly rumbled me as a disaster. Have you ever met him? Did you ever meet him after that? Yeah, I did, and we oh, had a nice, right. uh, a nice, enjoyable that's time. Good. But, um... Well, then, here is the greatest single ever. I mean, it is a, an amazing song. And it has a little weird coda at the end of uh, where they're saying something that I can't make out. It's the Islam. It sounds like Islam, Islam, Islam. That would be very provocative. It would be, wouldn't it? Let's hear it. Beetle Bum by Blur. What about the end bit? Oh, I like it at the end. That, that's the single version that we, that we played there. It's got a fade out on it or something. But on the album, it's a good little ending. And he goes, like the tape sort of winds up, comes off the spool at the end there. That was Blur with Beetle Bum. That's an amazing. So that's in my uh, top singles ever. I mean, that was a wonderful, heady time. When was that? 98? <laughs> <laughs> Ten uh, years ago yeah, or something? Was, something like that. A long time ago. And that was good, man. That was good stuff. That was off, uh, was that off 13, I think? That had song two on it. That was a good album, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, hey, this is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. We've got Sir Roger Moore coming in later. Very exciting. On the programme. He'll be in around about 11.30, something like that. Yeah, the idea is to get his reaction to our Quantum of Solace songs, even though I would imagine he'll be very positive about, um, about the new Bond. Who wouldn't be? He was positive on Jonathan Ross yeah, the other day. Yeah, he has to be. I mean, it's a, it's a tricky gig. You know, if you're an actor who's filled Bond's shoes, you'd have nothing but respect for anybody else who attempted it. I'm sure he doesn't feel threatened, though. He's widely recognised as, like, the quintessential... I mean, some people are snobbish about him, aren't they? Some people say, oh, no, Connery's better because he's harder-edged and Roger Moore's too camp. But I guess it's like Doctor Who. It's the one that you grew up with, isn't it? Yeah, I think I made my views clear in my song. I, I mean, he's the, he's, the, he's the man for me, because it's not like I can't take James Bond seriously. He, you know, he, and this is no insult to my father, in fact, it's flattery, but I used to think my father looked a little bit like Roger Moore, mm. and therefore I thought that I did, and <laughs> therefore I thought that I was going to be James Bond. Yeah. I think most people did. I think most, you know, young men go through the same thing, don't they? A little bit of, um, Bond fantasy. Bond envy. Yeah. Mm. I don't think I ever did. Really? Do you think I look like James Bond? Yes, you do. Thanks. I thought I, I, I looked most like, uh... Uh, what's Tattoo. his name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, the, with the razor blade bowler hat. Odd job. No, they're like, odd job. <laughs> Who's the little fella in the man Tattoo. with the golden gun? Yeah. yeah. Hervé uh, Villachez. Yeah. Quite a dirty chap, apparently, according to Roger's book. That's right. He yeah. loved ladies, there's, didn't he? There's, there's lots of very saucy anecdotes in here. <laughs> I enjoy them enormously. <laughs> anyway, he's coming in later, probably sometime about quarter past eleven or half past eleven. I know you. Um, I know you don't like talking about Jonathan Ross because you're always worried that we might shed listeners. But did you see his show last night? Uh, a little bit of it. It was very sweary. I thought was and you, it, and you know you expect a little bad language on yeah. there, but it was just wall to wall effing and jeffing last night. Really? Well, it's become 
acceptable, hasn't it? Olive, Jamie Oliver does it. His new show is full of swearing. Right. That other stupid chef does it. Ramsey. Crazy hair, Scarface, Ramsey. He was on there last night, and he was, I mean... Sorry, crazy hair, Scarface isn't a very respectable <laughs> <laughs> way to describe him. He's a talented <laughs> and brilliant and very clever, nice, kind Hey, man. crazy hair, Scarface! <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a good name for a gangster, though. Um, but, man, he was on there, he was effing and jeffing. Gervais, uh, Ricky Jarvis was uh, on there, and he was... Everything Bertram said... Bertram Pincus. It was F off this, F off that, the whole way through. And then Sarah Silverman comes on. She wasn't actually... Well, she's she's one of the world's cleverest and funniest swearers. She wasn't actually swearing, but she was certainly making some very explicit references to... You see, to she's the one whose entire adult career... Adult love practices. Uh, right. Her, her entire career is based on provocation mm -hmm. and saying shocking things. She was... Yet she's professional enough to get through a TV interview without actually using. Although she was a little awkward, I thought. Was she? Show, yeah. Was she? Well, oh, awkwardness is part of her shtick. Bit out of place. And she was one of those Americans stick. that came over All and part didn't... Of her shtick. She seemed like she hadn't really bothered to find out what uh england was all about oh no all. she's a smart cookie making a lot of references to american stuff that she you know talking about american what was it some uh american antidepressant or whatever that no one would ever know about and she's like you don't have that in this country i don't know have you seen her live she's playing live tomorrow at the labats apollo isn't no she? i haven't seen her live uh yeah well that'd be interesting it's a little dead end there isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> a conversational cul-de-sac <laughs> yeah a conv de sac uh is it ting ting's time now james it's got to be ting ting's time at some time so let's get over with now this is be the one by the ting tings text the nation text 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 the nation what if i don't want to text the nation but i'm using email is that a problem it doesn't matter text Yes, that was the Ting Tings uh, with Be The One, and this is Adam and John, BBC Six Music, and it's Text The Nation time, and as uh, you'll already know if you've been listening from the beginning of the show, we've got Sir Roger Moore coming into the studio. You may have seen him on every other uh, television programme, well, well, not a television programme, but every other media outlet this week, uh, being very funny and entertaining. But we would like you to try and come up with a question that you've never heard Roger ask before. We, we want a, a killer question from our listeners, and that's Text the Nation this week. It's very straightforward. Questions for Roger Moore, and we're going to select one uh, out of all of them that you send in and ask it to Sir Roger. Have you got one? I've got quite a few questions, yeah. Are you, any that you're pleased with, the things that you think are original? Well, it turns out that Sir Roger Moore during the shooting of For Your Eyes, no, The Spy Who Loved Me, mm -hmm. got terrible shingles. Did he? On the right-hand side of his face. And you're Jimmy Shingles. That's exactly where I had my shingles. Right. So I was going to chat to him about shingles. Shingles, Apparently, buddy. Everyone loves that. People love to hear. They love hearing about shingles. Me and Sir Roger talking about buboes. Shingle mingles, you Facial could call Facial buboes. <laughs> Mingle with the shingle. Mingle with the shingles. And uh, apparently in some of the reverses of The Spy Who Loved Me, you can see his shingles. A bit of shingle damage. A little bit of shingle on the cheekbone. Mm -hmm. See, that's fascinating isn't that it? that is interesting stuff i can't wait <laughs> to, to hear you asking him that question how many bubos did you have <laughs> where on your face were they what's he gonna say uh, i don't really did remember. you scratch them accidentally burst some does he talk about it in the book yes oh well then he will remember i guess mm. shingles <laughs> bonded by shingles all i've got yeah i've only got one question in my locker what you know what's it like being james bond well there was that yeah <laughs> Is that the well, one? Well, now you've said it like that. <laughs> it doesn't sound like such a good question. No, um, I had, uh, uh, yeah, just, uh, would you like to Roger Moore, I had. <laughs> that's the only one. Uh, that's not, dis that's disrespectful though, isn't it? But I just thought it might be a fun question to ask him a little bit. <laughs> what? what? That's a good idea. You know, I, I just thought maybe that that's... really the only one? That's, yeah. <laughs> Because what, <laughs> what else does he get asked, do you think? What are the things that he always gets asked? Like, what uh, was your favourite Bond film to make? Did you yeah. get to keep the car in The Spy Who Loved Me? Mm, that's a good question. Um, who, you know, I mean, what would you, you know, did you have... It's not looking promising for ...adult relations this? with all your co-stars, that kind of thing? I mean, did he... <laughs> no, I think he was fairly happily married quite He's early on in the game. Fairly chased. With children, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what but you, listeners, you can see we clearly need help. Yeah, we This need is going to be help. difficult unless we've got some good questions for Sir Roger. So please email adamandjoe.sixmusic at bbc.co.uk or text 64046 with your question for Sir Roger Moore and we will pick the, the best ones 
maybe the stupidest ones yeah and ask them unto him okay free play now for you listeners this is from the album songs for Drella by lou reed and john kale uh Drella, of course was their pet name for andy warhol because he was like a cross because they thought warhol was like a cross between cinderella and dracula right and it's an amazing album if you haven't heard it um weird little extracts from warhol's hey, diary hey, hey. yeah yeah uh we've got an email here from a listener matthew and jane wilson in streatham uh jane is expecting twins they say if we dedicate a song to them they will consider calling the twins adam and joe no yeah well listen i'm gonna consider dedi- consider i'm gonna dedicate yeah, matthew consider. and jane wilson mean? in streatham it's not legally binding so is sure, it? let's dedicate this to them let's dedicate this because this is a great song where do they live streatham yeah well this song is called small town i don't know if you'd call streatham a small town but i guess you. roger could. moore used to hang out in streatham a lot yeah well this is all about growing up in a small town there you go galvin harris there with acceptable in the 80s this is adam and joe here on bbc six music time is coming up to uh, 10.30. It's a beautiful day here in London town. It's going to be great weather this weekend. Fantastic weather for going around, um, just uh, walking and having mm. fun and chatting to people. I'm just filling before. You're I want, doing a really good job. I want job. it to be exactly 10.30 before I throw to the news. <laughs> so if you are out this weekend, take care, have fun, uh, don't eat Five, too much 56, ice cream. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC 6 Music. Time now for the news, news. with Claire and Elizabeth. The police was so lonely. You know, uh, we've got builders working on the house next door to us. Have you? Uh, yeah, the Cornish clan, and um, they are working very near to my uh, bathroom window mm. on scaffolding. Have you caught them peeking? <clears throat> well, obviously I'm sexy, mm-hmm. and they would want to maybe c- c- catch a snap, sell it to the European sure. mags. <laughs> but no, I haven't caught them uh, peeking. But I get very self-conscious when I play music in the shower. Right. And I... Do you ever do this? I kind of approach it as if I'm DJing for them. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided, I thought, well, i got to play, you know, builder-friendly music. I don't yeah. want them to jump to conclusions. Yeah. Builders are very, uh, you know, macho, and it's important to play, you know, proper music. So what did you stick on there? I put some police on, right. hence mentioning it. Of course. And uh, it, it, was a, it was a smash. They were singing along, whistling along for no. the rest of the day. Were they yeah. actually singing along? There was some whistling. It was slightly embarrassed whistling. They curtailed it because I don't and think they what? wanted to admit that they were enjoying the music so much. Where were they from? There? Were they British builders or Polish builders? Uh, or? I think they're foreigners. Yeah. Right. The, this is the best job I've ever done. <laughs> oh, the music is so great coming out of, from the bathroom over there. That's what I was hoping they were thinking. That's almost certainly what they were saying. Some more personal news. Uh, we've had an email from Jeff Masson. He says, just wondering if you could confirm my possible sighting of Dr. Sexy, that's me, mm-hmm. on the tube on Thursday at around 9.45. I was on the Victoria line coming home, sat opposite two blonde girls who were having a right good bitch about some girl they worked with called Izzy. Their inane conversation didn't seem to interest Joe in the slightest, and he preferred to flick through his copy of the Metro at a rate of a page a second. I was contemplating calling Heat magazine to notify them of my celeb spotting, but I wasn't sure if it was the real Joe or if they'd be interested. That was me. Or if they'd be interested. That hurts a lot. Well, no, I think he's right. I I don't think we'd get to Heat. Do you? I mean, do call them, Jeff, and see if it appears. I don't think we're... Probably we wouldn't anymore. No, I I don't think they'd be interested. But that was me... And I remember, Jeff, those two women, and they were having an extraordinary conversation. About Izzy? Yeah. What's they were, they were What's full on. They were saying, she's so two-faced. <sighs> I can't believe she got the job. She must have been a completely different person at the interview if, if to get that job. I can't believe she's in the position she's in. I could do it better than her. Is that it, sort of thing. What if Izzy's listening? Well, Izzy, I felt like saying, now look, you two, I don't know Izzy, but I bet she's nicer than you two, because I've never heard two people... Uh, you know, you call her Two-Faced. Exa- I bet they're nice to her, I, I don't even know you and you're being Two-Faced. <laughs> you, uh. Jeff, you should have said hello to me and we could have, we could have, you know, sorted those women out because I bet they're unhappy. Yeah. What they were exposing really was a profound unhappiness within themselves. Absolutely. And they were, uh, that's why they were attacking Izzy. <sighs> uh, if anyone knows Izzy or the two women, uh, please get in touch. Maybe we can reconstruct that that uh southbound victoria line journey what were you reading about in metro i was just flicking through it yeah just scanning the Amy headlines house yeah the wine house <laughs> that's what they usually talk about isn't it a little a few corrections from earlier on in the show for you listeners 
Uh, Blur, Beetle Bum was from the album Blur, not from 13. Yeah, the, uh, the song we played, The Bad Moon Rising, is when he turns into the wolf, not the sexy scene. Not that's, the sexy um, scene. that's Van Morrison with Moon Dance. And, uh, easy email. mistake to make. Very easy. Sexy mistake. Uh, here's, uh, email from Stu in Leeds. We were talking about, I was, uh, speculating about net bots and why they were called net bots, not, no, no, bot nets. Why are they called bot nets, not net bots? Dear, hi Adam and Joe. I'm going to give him a nerd voice because he <laughs> he deserves it. one. Yeah. Hi Adam and Joe. Um, uh, um, you <laughs> <laughs> no, that's too. You're going that's too, too much, far. isn't it? You'll alienate him. I will, won't I? Sorry, the Steve. rage eyes will pop. Sorry, it. Stu. Um, oh, difficult, difficult <laughs> give him a really moderate. clever voice. Cool and clever. Hello, Adam and Joe. Yeah, that's it. Now it just sounds like Bond. No, that was great. You were wondering why botnets are so called and not named netbots. Being a geek, I can answer your question. They are a network of bots, not a bot on a network. Uh-huh. Stu in Leeds. <laughs> <laughs> just the way you said Stu in Leeds. Having a nice bit of stew in Leeds. Uh, now, we've got a song uh, coming up for you listeners. This is Friendly Fires. And uh, is this the one we're playing now? Oh, yeah, you've got to look at the bottom of the screen, don't you? It's a new single from their self-titled debut album. (laughs) I'll never work it out. Jumps in Cornish. Here we go. This is called Paris. A wash of sound at the end there. A douche. (laughs) A douche. An audio douche. A sound douche. From Friendly Fires with Paris. Very enjoyable stuff. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. I think we should uh, find out about Text the Nation now. Let's have the jingle. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. So we have Sir Roger Moore coming into the show in about 45 minutes, and we're asking you to help us think of really clever questions to ask him, something that maybe he hasn't been asked before, something that'll make this interview really memorable. Would you like to Roger Moore? That we've got that one in reserve. Mm-hmm. That's our fallback uh, position. But here are some suggestions from the listeners. Uh, uh, okay, where shall we begin? Is this like, do you like to hear this kind of thing? Yeah, Just I do, man. It makes it feel makes it real. real. It yeah. it is this, real. This is what it's going to be like in the future. Um, it's what it's going to be like when Roger comes in. <laughs> Just lots of silences. Do <laughs> you think we should uh, talk to Roger like that? No. All the time. No. I'm going to. No. If we do it from the very beginning, he'll just think that's real. And he'll oh. think he's amongst friends. <laughs> <laughs> These are my type of people. <laughs> <laughs> I like this radio station. Oh, it's intelligence. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if he's listening to this in the car on the way here, he is doing a U-turn. He's going to be turning he is right leaving. back. <laughs> I'm too tired for this. Uh, this the show sounds too silly. Second thoughts. Call my agent. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the first question that's come in anonymously. A question for Sir Roger. Was there any truth to the rumour that the girl from For Your Eyes Only was a tranny and went out with Des Lynam? <laughs> what? Where's he got Come that Come on, from? that's a good question. That is a good yeah, question. Yeah, Roger, Sir Roger. <laughs> that girl from For Your Eyes Only, was she a tranny? Did she do Des Lynam? <laughs> James James Bond. Um, did this was was yeah? <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a bloke. <laughs> hey, uh, here's another one from Colin. Ask Rog, would he rather have a stumpy little tail on his bum or a gnarly little horn on his forehead? He's got to pick one. Cheers, that's, Colin. That's not specific. Just to reading Roger, though, is it? you out a cross section of the questions. Yeah. I'm not saying these are the good ones. Are we going to ask him that? No, you no, can't. No, I don't think so. You you know, that could just be applied to anybody. What does it tell you as well? I, I find them quite insulting, those questions, because... It, Colin, it, you've insulted Adam. Uh, you know, because it's a total... It's like they're so uninterested in you that that's, that's right, all they can be right, bothered to right, ask right. you. The question needs to be informed in some way, right? Yeah, like yeah. the Des Lynam tranny one. Exactly. That's a better question. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you wouldn't like this one. James, James uh, Bond. What? No, I'm going to skip that one. Uh, I'm skip Did that you one read as well. these through? Were you- <laughs> I picked the best ones, but now my criteria have, has become <laughs> <Shifted. laughs> tighter. Uh, ben in Liverpool says, "Did you get to keep the giant rubber bum that you had to wear as a disguise in Moonraker?" Now he's just imagining that, isn't he? There's no giant rubber bum in in Moonraker, is there? Giant rubber bum. As a disguise, is that like a subversive question? I don't know what's going on there. Why did you read that one out then? Because it's interesting and mysterious. (laughs) I'm just thinking about your criteria tightening. (laughs) 
think you should see a doctor. Um, let me see. Basically, the, the short answer is that all of the questions we've had in are quite silly or very serious. I'm scanning them now and I'm thinking, well, most of them are too silly or, or too dry. Well, we've got to ask him something. <laughs> well, this is this segment of text the nation can be to encourage. So we've got we've got two questions. I'll, I'll give you some more. Would okay. you like to Roger more? Okay. And was that bloke a transsexual? <laughs> 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 well, here's someone from uh, Dave in North Curry, Somerset. Love the show. Is Roger's middle name really me? I do hope it is, as I've believed this since I was small. Okay, okay. I'm well, going to keep reading. Well, that's like my question. Well, I know, though, it? but it's all we've got. Oh my Dear Lord. Adam and Joe, no, oh, I can't read that one out. Listen, we should play some music. You've got a free choice, right? Here we go. Look, this is a good one. Toby oh. and Swindon. Roger, have you ever done Bond saying really ridiculous things when alone at home and bored? And someone else uh, emailed in the question whether a lady, mm -hmm. while making love to Sir Roger, mm -hmm. has ever asked him to do the Bond voice. Are those suitable questions? Yes. Yes. I mean, that's it. I'm interested to But know listeners, that. you can see we're in trouble. Help us with some really good <laughs> questions for Roger Moore. 64046 or, or email adamandjoe.6music at bbc.co.uk. Bond based free play time. Yeah, now. here's this one of my favourite Bond songs ever. This is Carly Simon uh, with the music from the Five Pints advert. Bankers will be bankers. Yes. yes. Credit Come crunch. On, crunchy. Uh, Bail that's out. the House Martins. Yeah. What was that one called? Get Up Off Our Knees. Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. There's a lot of excitement at the moment uh, in the entertainment industry uh, about the forthcoming Star Trek film. Oh, I thought you were going to say the Charlie Borman thing. There's a lot of excitement about <laughs> Charlie Borman's trip across. Where has he gone? <laughs> I don't know where he's going. On Just holiday. Go to the shops. Um, about the new Star Trek film. Mm. Right? Now, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of Star Trek. You don't do Trek, do you? No. Cornballs doesn't really like the trek in he doesn't like episodic science fiction no drama. but um you love it don't you adam buxton love trekking big love fan trek. of star trek uh I'm, I'm a big fan of the star trek tng actually oh really the next generation not and the 60s star trek not so much you know i'd watch it if it was on when i was a nipper but uh not a massive fan so uh it's specifically the picard era loved picard, picard. and was ra very disappointed by the last couple of um tng movies right never fulfilled the promise it's a friend would you say it would be true to say that the star wars move star wars star trek movie franchise has been has been kind of uh ground into the dirt yes people did pops on it uh increasingly diminishing returns for the fans very much so yeah more and more disappointing and it's due for resurrection oh it, isn't isn't that right like jj abrahams he's got the dreams of of a billion nerds held cupped in his in his hands absolutely well you know i wouldn't I, I, if anyone's gonna do a good job it's him surely well what about you adam buxton <laughs> what, what would you do with the star trek franchise i'd leave it alone joe because not not a lot's known out about the film there's a trailer isn't there that unveils the magnificent new starship enterprise mm. and there are some stills have been released now showing the crew that the new cast all in their uniforms apart from kirk because part of the plot is kirk's process of becoming the captain of, of the enterprise right he's some kind of a renegade trainee or something uh -huh. who ends up having to con uh, uh, take command of the starship enterprise under very dramatic circumstances or Oof. something uh but their uniforms look similar yeah they're the 60s color right so it's fairly simple yeah not too elaborate not too the, elaborate when the i always thought it was weird like when star trek the motion picture came mm -hmm. out uh i didn't like the fact that they fooled around with the uniforms and made them sort of ornate and frilly a little right. bit you know right i didn't like it i think they've gone back to basics but do you do you approve of that what would you do with the franchise if you were going to bring it back well i'll tell you uh, um this is a serious point right, right. get ready oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the direction i wanted this to go in um i want i want it to be i want them to respect the color schemes okay that to me is very important it's like you remember when root masters in london the hop mm -hmm. on hop off buses the palette it's it's key to the mood of yeah of anything. exactly root yeah. masters used to have a lovely warm interior the upholstery on the seats was checkered. kind of checkered mm. oranges reds that kind of thing and that to me was nice but when they went suddenly they went Went all neon and the non root master buses with the foldy doors it was all cold and gray and neony and that i think is what caused society's fabric to crumble a little bit and for, for it encouraged youths to behave in a cold callous way just like the colors so game. you wanted to have the 60s star trek colors yeah yeah I do yeah well i think it's got those i think you're in luck Good. what about the bridge 
The bridge. Because technology's come on a lot, hasn't it? Yeah. And you know all science fiction is really a product of its age because they always use the most sophisticated knobs mm. available at the time. That's a tough one, isn't but it? But knob technology advances very quickly and often the knobs are outdated. Uh, do you know what Abrahams has done? I've seen a shot of the bridge. Yeah, sure I have. Well, he's bound to have made it all curvy and uh, modern, like a curvy... Do you think? Modern car. Didn't they do that on The Next Generation? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Tell me. It looks good to me. Does it, it? looks kind of retro, A yeah. little bit boxy. Retro-futuristic, yes. Good. Have you seen the new Spock? No. He's a man. Is he? From things. Yeah. On something. I don't know what he's from, but he looks quite good. He looks very like your brother. Oh. Yeah. Is he white or yes. black? No, he's a he's a Caucasian gentleman. He's white, right? Because they had um, on Voyager, mm. they had a black Klingon called Tuvok. Mm -hmm. I think he was a Klingon. And uh, no, he's not a Klingon. What am I talking about? Where's Spock from? Vulcan. Vulcan. I'm not even a Trekkie. <laughs> You're making such <laughs> fundamental well, errors. This is what I mean. I'm not into. I'm not into. What the sort lore. of plot do you want to see in the new Star Trek film? Oh, I don't know. I just want a big spaceship and lots of. Um, I don't want too much humour. Right. I'll tell you, you that. You want it much. taken seriously. Yeah. I'm yeah. Because little... it is serious, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. It's utopia you're yes. dealing with here. Yes. And of course, Simon Pegg, yeah, the Pegg nation's also... favourite comedy star, is playing Scotty. Yeah, that's okay. I'm sure. I'm sure Simon is reverential enough to. Uh, oh, he looks take good. The still of him looks very good. Yeah. He looks quite serious. Yeah. Good. Good. Uh, good. Uh, playing older than he usually plays. Yeah. Gruffer. I don't want it too campy. I'll tell you one thing. I would like to see in there is a bit yeah. of. Um, uh fun to be had with moving around in time time travel i like yes yes i love they to. can do that on star trek can't they yeah are you excited about it yeah i am actually really yeah i think jj abrahams he's pretty good are you going to be there on the opening day well that's going a bit far really <laughs> that's not the kind of thing you do <laughs> i don't do that at all anymore no uh, but I'll go out and I'll rush out and buy it on the DVD. Book. Oh, that's nice of you. On DVD, six and I'll, months after it's come out of the I'll cinema. It. <laughs> You're not a Trek fan at all. You don't even know where Spot comes all right, from. All right, I'll go and see it. That's better. Will we get invited to the premiere? No, no. Not after that display. No. All right, music time now. What's next? Uh, it's the uh, top of the hour. Let's have the top of the hour jingle. And then after that's a bit of White Stripes for you. This is the voice of the big British castle. It is the top of the hour. Wonderful. I got so bored with the last hour, I'm glad it's gone. Now here's the new one, it's exciting and it's new. How do you do? Wow, so that's the White Stripes with Seven Nation Army. Very apt, of course, because Jack White's done the theme tune to the new Bond film. That's right, and uh, we've heard that Sir Roger Moore is in the house. He's Very going exciting. to be joining us uh, at around about half past the hour. And uh, we're going to have to get our questions together for him, get them in order. We are. Oh, my lordy. Oh, my lord. This, there's a good reason we don't usually... I mean, we made an exception mm. because Sir Roger is, is important to us both. We don't usually have guests, so we need to apologise in advance to our listeners and Sir Roger if our interviewing uh, style isn't particularly evolved. The last time I think we interviewed a human person, yeah, famous or not, was when we did uh, this show called Adam and Joe Go Tokyo, was it not? Right. Years ago, like 2003, we, mm. we were out in Japan and we were doing a show about popular culture. And I would say generally our interviews were poor. Mm. <laughs> I did lots for Radio 4, for the film program oh, on Radio 4, yeah, and yeah. I was just much too blunt right. with uh, very famous people. James Blunt. I was quite rude to Robin Williams Were you? about the film Patch Adams. Yeah. Why? <clears throat> I just thought I should tell it to him straight. That's a low... Did you really? Yeah, I thought, Robin Williams, you've been kowtowed to all day. Cornish is going to play hard for <laughs> About Patch Adams. Yeah, about a, a run of very disappointing... Um, and Sir Roger, we, we, in no way will I do anything like this. I'm going to be so reverential, it's almost going to be sickening. Yeah. But with Williams, I stepped over the line, and he looked genuinely depressed. What the hell were you thinking about? I felt ashamed after the interview. I thought, wow, he's a human being after all. He has feelings. He's Patch Adams. What did you say to him about I said, what were you thinking? <laughs> no, did you actually yeah, say those yeah. words? I said, what went wrong? What were you thinking? Oh, my Lord. And oh, what did he dear. say? He said, I, I don't know. Ah, it was a bad decision. You know, <laughs> it was just, it was all bad. The it hair was started falling off his forearms. But, you know, that's in the past. And this is going to be a very exemplary... Uh, you know, it's going to be a very good... This, this interview is going to be played back at BBC Workshops yeah. <laughs> to show how to conduct... 
a respectful reverential interview <laughs> yeah i yeah. believe that fingers crossed now um joe when you have arguments with people mm. um whether it's a girlfriend or a, a friend or whoever mm. do you uh, uh, and i'm talking not so much of emotional type arguments but uh, i mean all arguments are a bit emotional aren't they but about facts specifically disagreements about facts and then if you find out years later that that fact actually you uh, you know you were right and they were wrong yeah do you do anything about trying to get back in touch <laughs> with the person well th i feel that with this question you are hoping that i you know will sympathize with you because you do that quite a lot don't you do you think i do well you're the man that thought airplanes traveled at the speed of light yeah i did until you were how old no i was young ish you were in your teens though weren't oh, you oh i was 11 i was 11 <laughs> i was 11 yeah but uh i can't think of an uh, a time when that's happened to me but it's obviously happened to you recently so get Things it off your chest gets under my it didn't happen that recently really? seven years ago when what when did you first... say Seven years ago, when our first son was born, mm. um, I remember the night that my wife came back from the hospital and, mm. and he was sleeping in our room. And uh, I like to have a fan on by the bed, right? I like mm. the noise of it. I've actually—it's environmentally friendly. It's really—it's—it's yeah. it's really not. So I've stopped doing it. But right. there was at that point, I, I really—it was summer as well, and it was very hot. Anyway, I like the fan on, and we had this massive argument, me and my wife, about like you can't have the fan on because the babies don't like it. It's really dangerous. The baby might die. It's, mm. it's terrible. You've got to be so careful. We had a huge. I was like, it's a fan. The baby would like the fan. I like. Well, I want to keep the fan. This is a disaster. We've got a baby now, and I'm not allowed to have my fan. My whole world's <laughs> being turned upside down. <laughs> so it wasn't a very uh, mature argument. But um, anyway, I gave in, obviously. So I this was thought, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Today. Cut to the present day, and... I'm flicking through, uh, what's it called, the Week magazine, and here in their health and science section, fans reduce the risk of cot death. Parents may be able to reduce the risk of cot death by putting a fan in their baby's bedroom. Blah, 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 blah. Adam Buxton got into a big argument with his wife about this seven <laughs> years ago. No, it doesn't say that. But I, I'm, I'm so excited about taking this back to my that, you, that you've decided to read it out on national radio. I'm the king! <laughs> Just to rub it in yeah. for poor old Sarah. Is that mature? Yes, that's Good. exactly the kind of thing a grown man does. I was just checking, because I wasn't sure. There's a little kernel of doubt there about whether it was mature or not, but I'm glad you've kind of... No, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank and that's, you. that's put your wife in her place. Thanks very much. Uh, okay, here's some music now. This is the Brazilian super sexy combo CSS with Move. That's CSS with Move. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, we're going to have another go at our fantastic new accents competition now. You can't call it a competition. It's not a competition, it's a, it's a happening, a feature, an event. Okay, yeah. there's no competitive element to this, uh, what's about to happen at all. The idea is, can we recognise real or fake accents? How good are people at doing accents? And this is, uh, of course, coming off Adam and my obsession with, uh, bad accents in movies, uh, English actors doing terrible American accents and vice versa. So how, genuinely, how easy is it to spot somebody who's putting on a foreign accent? So we've got two callers on the line. Uh, they are either pretending to be foreign or are genuinely foreign, and we have to decide whether they are really foreign or pretending. Right. By the quality of their, of their accent. I would say to both of those people, while they're listening right now, have a magazine or a book handy. Some text that they can read out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nothing filthy, obviously. And until the moment when we ask you to be truthful, you can be as deceptive as you want with us in terms of what you say your name is, where you say you're from, you can invent an entire background for yourself, all designed to convince us that you are genuinely yeah. of the extraction that you're claiming to be. So we've got Rebecca on the line, I think. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? I'm fine. <laughs> and uh, this is your accent we're, we're hearing now in full effect, is it? Yes, that's correct. It just sounds normal to me. Uh -huh. It sounds like you're English. No. No? <laughs> Rebecca. I'm from Texas. You're from Texas? Yes. Well, would you um, read out a little extract uh, from a book or a magazine if you have one lying okay. around? Okay, sure. I'm reading from Good Homes, an article by Xander Rhodes. It says, how would you describe your style? Colorful. I'm certainly eclectic because I'm a collector, real. a hoarder real. even. Uh, That's okay. real. That's real. That's real, isn't it? Uh, that yeah. sounds to me like a genuine Texan accent. <laughs> Very good. Is yeah. that not true? No, I am. There you go. And whereabouts in Texas are you from? I'm just north of Dallas. 
Oh. Just north of Dallas? Are uh-huh. You, are you just from just north of Dallas See, right that's, there? That's not quite <laughs> such a good accent there. Well, no, this, wow, if was I was really in a film, if I was in a film, <laughs> that's how I would do it. Uh-huh. Whereabouts would you say that accent was from, Rebecca? Oh, the bowels of hell. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Stockwell. That was pretty rubbish. <laughs> Sorry, you, babe. Are you um, a resident of the UK now? or? Uh... Yes, I am. I'm a citizen. That was yeah. too easy. Yeah. It's too easy. Was it easy? No, it wasn't well, it's, easy. It's just so ge- genuine, your accent. It Aww. sounds so ingrained. Mm. Uh, can you do a, a, a British accent, Rebecca? I knew that was coming. No, it's really bad. Give, give it a try. shot. Read out that same bit of text. Imagine you're in front of cameras. You're, you're, you're playing an English person. You've got to uh. crack an English accent. Read that same bit of text out in the best English accent you possibly can. Go. Okay. Sandra, how would you describe your lifestyle? Colourful, uh, certainly eclectic, because I am a collector, a hoarder even. That is brilliant. Is it, no, it sounded crap. the same to me. No, that was good. Yeah. That was okay. good. Okay, well, thank, thank you for, for, for calling, Rebecca. Sure. Um, you're very kind. Thanks, Thanks for thank being you. from Texas. And do you, know, do you know the band Spoon, Rebecca? I'm familiar with their work. Yeah, they're from Texas. That was yeah. a little bit of Texas bonding for you. It was very good. It was, good. Go. It was lovely. It was very primitive. Warms <laughs> the cockles of my heart. Thanks there so much. Thanks a lot, Rebecca. Thanks for listening. We've got Dekus on the line now. Hello, Dekus. Dekus. Hi, Dekus. Here. Oh, hey, Dekus. <laughs> now, Dekus, what nationality are you claiming to be? I'm not claiming. I'm Trinidadian, you know. Oh, no. Uh, Dekus. Dekus. What? He went well, for... What's the problem, Who vetted these calls? <laughs> Who's the... responsible for selecting these calls? Hey, uh, Dekus, have you got a uh, magazine or a book handy there that you can read from for a little while? Yeah, man. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I have something yeah. uh, called, um, let me see, Enigma. It's about the Enigma code, you know. <laughs> I was standing oh, in the my. middle of a clearing in a pine forest just outside Berlin. And I realized that I must have found what I had been seeking for months. Okay, I've been Deacus, Deacus, you can stop there. You had better, for the sake of the BBC and our guidelines, be genuinely where you're saying you are from. Yeah, um, man. I grew up near Chigones. Near the where? Upper part of Spain. Spain. Ch- Chigones. Yeah, yeah. You heard of V.S. Naipaul? Yes. Yes. Yes, he, absolutely. He grew up there, man. Right, right. Dekus, is this yeah. is that real, Dekus? Now you have to speak with your real accent because we believe that maybe you're putting that one on. Yeah, um, you've rumbled me. Oh. <laughs> Dekus, <laughs> that was um, that was a good attempt. But the, you know, the thing that gives away a lot of people when they're putting on the accent yeah. is a certain nervous breathlessness. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that was sort of undone by its broad stereotypical nature. Uh, you, uh, actually, as kind Lack of, of close observation, as kind of Jamaican stroke Trinidadian accents go, I thought yeah. it was not too bad. Really, I did. I thought it I, was too bad. <laughs> I literally I thought, thought I it was too to bad. Into it at the end though when i started talking about naipaul and everything I, right I thought I you was started to really in, inhabit the role you know that was the bit that actually made me think you were clinically insane at the, at the, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. thing is I, I think if there's a skin color difference that the the casting people would be so unlikely to cast you as someone from trinidad yeah but you do I, get a I, lot i'm actually half trinidadian but oh, my, yeah. mom, ah. my mom's from trinidad so there you go you ah. do get a lot of uh, it's funny hearing white trinidadians who with, with a very strong right. accent yeah yeah because you, you you sort of assume they're putting it on <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know I mean? well deacon well, yeah, yeah. You, uh, I think you fooled Adam there. Is your name really Deacus? No, it's Jack. It's Jack. Jack. <laughs> well, Deacus, you really fooled Adam there. <laughs> How did he fool me? <laughs> you thought he was real. I did not think he was in any way real. I thought he was doing a decent job of... of a decent, if insane, job <laughs> of pretending to be from Trinidad. Um, but, Jack, thank you very much indeed yeah. for your call. Have okay. a good weekend. What are you up to this weekend? Um, I'm going to Norwich. Hey! hey. It's where your wife is from, I think, or something? Uh, East Anglia. We're, we're, we're living near Norwich, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, but I grew up in Norwich, so I'm going there to see my parents and my Trinidadian uncle. Excellent. Uh, well, have a great time, and thank you for listening and calling, Deacus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> have a good one. Take care. I'm not going to stop calling him Deacus. Cheers, Jack. So there's that experimental competition. I'm not sure how that how that played out. What in do the you end. think? Uh, it's a tough one, isn't it? Maybe it's we a tough can one. It come a back to thought. it. Certainly won't get working on the jingle just yet. We're very excited, listeners, to have Sir Roger Moore in the studio. We'll be talking to him in a, in a matter of minutes, probably after the news. Um, but before we do, here's some more music for you now, listeners. This is a free play, 
and this is field music. Have you heard any field music, Joe? No, but I've heard they're good. Uh, they are good, yeah. Oh, look, the Someone's phone Someone's left the phone off the alert. hook and it's making its alarm noise. The off-the-hook alert. It's good, that, isn't it? Yeah. It's one of the good things about modern music. life. Um, no, it's not actually field music. They're good. It's an unusual sound. It's like a cross between Steely Dan and Gang of Four or something. Right. You know what I mean? Like, angular on the one hand, but sort of smooth and, uh, harmonious on the other. Anyway, listen to this. This is walking to work. Working to work, not walking to work, you idiot. Can't you get anything right? No. It, you know what? We do it on purpose to keep people engaged. Exactly. That was Field Music. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Uh, a bit more music now, then the news, and then we are going to be meeting Sir Roger Moore here on the programme, so do stay tuned. Right now, here's Travis. Travis with Something Anything. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. It's nearly time to meet Roger Moore. Uh, after the news and a bit of music, we will be doing exactly that. I can see him through the window, Joe Cornish. I know. He's through there. I wonder if, uh, did he do any, um, accents? Was he, uh, he wasn't really an accent. Well, we can ask Sir Roger that. I, I think, I seem to remember him being in a Nazi uniform in one of his films. Mm -hmm. Maybe, uh, Escape to Athena or From Athena or whatever it was called. But can he do a good Trinidadian one? Well, <laughs> if there's any show that's going to test that, it'll be this one. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the news. 007, a fantasy Bond theme. That's Barry Adamson there. Very good. And our guest in the studio recognised that, of course, as the theme from Matt Helm, <laughs> he said. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, th I think he knew, of course, uh, that it wasn't the theme from Matt Helm, as he is. It was from The Persuaders. It was, yeah, <laughs> there you go. Uh, it was uh, TJ Hooker. Um, we are very pleased to welcome Sir Roger Moore to the studio here. How are you doing? Thank you, Adam. I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you. Hello, Sir Roger. I just want you to say my name, that's all. Joe. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much for, for coming in. I've got to say, this is a very big moment for uh, the, the child inside me. Because, uh, man, I used to love all of your films, like everybody, pretty much everybody else of our generation and everybody else in the country. You didn't stop loving them, though, did you? Yeah, no, I st absolutely. Yes, you did, when you met Robin Williams. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Fell in love with him instead. No, they, uh, you know, you're, a lot of people... Um, a kind of, uh, you know, have lost track of the bonds because um, they. Joe's got overwhelmed I've by. Got overwhelmed. He's, got all, starstruck, he's yes. got all starstruck. He's got all Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, I think what Joe was saying is very nervous. Is because. Um, no, I, it's, this is weird for me as well because I was watching The Spy Who Loved Me yesterday um with uh with my young son frank he'd never seen it was before. he in it i don't remember him. uh no he wasn't in it oh i see uh, he was watching it i was mm -hmm. showing it to him and um i wasn't sure if i should show it to him or not because i thought maybe it was too grown up for him do you know what i mean like he's he was he's only um five or something mm, well i don't know i don't think there's anything particularly frightening in it he was freaked out uh by jaws in there well i was too um, yeah, I mean, he, he thought, he thought he was very scary, unsettled by the metal teeth and, uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> Can you imagine if J Jaws had done, what was, what was the marvellous film with Tony Hopkins? Uh, oh, yeah, Science, Science of the Lambs. Lambs. Mm. <laughs> with those great big yes. metal choppers. Yeah. But poor Richard Keel, he could only keep the, uh, you know, last about 60 seconds with the teeth in. Because, I'm sure. Well, it was as uh, you know, have you ever chewed a piece of silver paper? Oh, and it was like having that in his mouth, and so you would start gagging after about horrible. Minute. You had a, sp uh, a technique for playing opposite those uh, villains, Sir Roger, though, didn't you? Like a way to respond. It says in your bio, a way to respond oh. to their evilness. I just uh, Im imagine. Sometimes you didn't have to imagine that uh, they had halitosis. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> halitosis, which is something to do with something between the toes. <laughs> uh. Yeah. And then you, yes, Jerry exactly. Hollywood toasts, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you recoiled and winced from the uh, imagined bad mm, breath there. No, it's just to go back slightly. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, Joe is being very careful about um, keeping the sir at the beginning of no, the No, there's no there. sir. No, my really? Sir. No, Charlie, Mary, anything you like. Really? Mm. So you're not, I mean, because, you know, that's it's nice to be knighted. I want to be knighted. It's not going to happen, but... I can arrange it. Yeah, if you could, that would be ideal. I will speak to HM. How long ago were you knighted? 
I think it, I think it was five years ago, six yeah. years ago. I mean, that is good, isn't it? Being at being a knight of the realm, and but uh, but you don't. I mean, people generally would address you as Sir Roger, would they, out of respect? Uh, well, that is the correct form of address for yeah. a, 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 a knight, a KBE, but uh, you, you, sometimes it's Sir Moore, yeah. which is, is not, of course, but I, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's uh, You don't uh, get shirty about it. Why would I? I don't know. Some knights would, I can imagine. Well, it isn't. Who's the famous actor that goes into a terrible tizzy if, if you don't call him? He, ben Kingsley, isn't it? Ben Kingsley? Rumour has it. Surely not. Uh, this is not something I've heard of anybody who knows him, but apparently if you don't call him Sir Ben, he goes into a rage. <laughs> he goes into a little Gandhi-style yeah. rage and starts... He has a fit. Wow. Well, he was Gandhi. Yeah, exactly. Right. So he's more noble than the rest of us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Gandhi at the one end of the spectrum and at the other end, the bloke from Sexy Beast. Have you seen that film? Oh, uh, 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 Sexy Beast. It's brilliant. It's very good. Got to watch that it's one. It's got uh, Ray Winston in it. Oh, it's Ray that. Winston. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it's marvellous. Yeah. Uh, now, we have been um, asking some of our listeners to send in questions, because we were keen not to just ask you the same questions that everybody else asks mm. you. I mean, what do you get asked most often? What's the key? What's Are they the your one? own teeth? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do I get? Uh, yeah. Uh, who was your favourite Bond girl? What was your favourite Bond film? Right, right, right. We're not going to ask. We're not going to uh, ask one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to ask either of those. But a, a question lots of people are asking is whether you use, or while you were playing Bond, whether you used the character at any time outside of the films, for instance, to attract ladies, or you were happily married during uh, most of the Bond years, weren't you? Yes, I think you can say happily I was married. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But did you ever use your Bond skills, your voice, or the persona? outside of the films to, to you know to gain leverage in life or any situation no no but surely you could slip into that voice and those mannerisms at any point and you know stun people well the voice and the mannerisms are me and uh, you know you say but it's the same in the saint the same in the persuaders or ivanhoe or maverick i don't change yeah i'm just me. What about um, Sh uh, Brian from Norfolk says, um, and this must have been asked to you before, so I apologise if it has. Has any lady ever wanted you to pretend you were James Bond when you were making love? You know, like a little sexy scene from a Bond movie. I really want to know, says Brian. Uh, it must have happened. You don't have to go into detail. Well, Brian, I'm I'm not going to tell you these these things. That's you might yes. get too excited in. <laughs> in norfolk that's a yes. i shall be in norwich i'll be in norwich this week signing books oh good one that's my next so sir so roger's point is that, that he you you kind of never snap out of character you are the character yeah yes in a very rewarding way so mm. it's not a question of a woman having to request that it's just 24 hours a day yeah non-stop he's got a license for that weapon which is steady. a fantastic thought isn't yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to play a bit of music and after this we are going to play you our bits of music that we've created for the new bond film quantum yeah. of solace but we would very much like your opinion i, I look forward to hearing it uh, first here is source with you got the love candy Staten there uh with the source you got the love we are here in the uh, six music studio with roger moore sir roger moore no charlie moore Jimmy Moore, Johnny Moore. <laughs> He's now here. we should uh, uh, explain. So I'm going to carry on calling you Sir Roger. It feels wrong not to. Mm. We should explain what's about to happen. We 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 have a segment on this program where Adam and I write songs. Mm -hmm. So uh, and we pick a theme each week and we go away individually and well, we each and we week, sometimes <laughs> yeah, every once a month yeah and we, and we we craft these songs. When I say craft, I mean that <laughs> in the loosest sense of the word craft. And the theme one week was to make prospective theme tunes for the Quantum of Solace to try and second guess the producers and see if we could come up with a better theme song. Um, so we are going to now play you, maybe just to ease you in gently, one of those uh, theme songs. Yeah. And see what you think. See whether you have you heard the new theme song to the Quantum of Solace, the Jack White and Alicia Keys song. I heard it once. And do you have a strong opinion on? Uh, did you have a strong opinion on the theme songs in the in the Bond movies you were in? Because uh, you had some of the best. You had "Live and Let Die." Great, great piece of. For your eyes only music. is great. Uh, Nobody does it better. Is well, great. I always true, had a soft spot true. for Moonraker. Well. Moonraker's fantastic. Yeah. Bassy. No, they were all good. I, you know, the, the, the one the one thing about the Bond films that you can be sure of is going to be good music. Yeah. Mm. And I, I, I hope, hopefully, quite a What about the Madonna one? 
obviously you couldn't say anything anything at all really did oh, madonna do one yeah she did uh die die another day yeah oh, Lord, analyze you. this fried it had all sorts of weird um oh. talking in it and it was odd well listen it's genuinely regarded as the as the weakest theme yeah the yeah sling. let's play uh ours now do you want to go first joe or? sure yeah yeah mine is uh it's just called the quantum of solace and and see what you think of this song sir roger He's got a gun, great big man tits. He's got your ears and tiny trunks. Dame Judy Dench is furious with him. He's gone completely out to lunch. The quantum of the solace. quantum of solace. It's lyrically provocative, <laughs> Sir Roger, and I don't expect you to respond in, in, in detail and, unless you want to. Those are, those are my opinions. Um, I say, Don Black, eat your heart out. Oh, well, that's <laughs> very flattering, I think, even though I'm not entirely sure who Don Black is. He wrote most of the Did lyrics he? for one song. Really? He was the lyricist. And along with Carol Beasig and uh, right. Robin Hamlish. Right. I'm sorry. And Leslie so Brickers. Informed. Leslie yeah. Brickers. Mm -hmm. Right. So, well, that's very flattering. Joe's thesis there roger is that um the noughties have got the bond they deserve a nasty brutish bond as opposed to the ma rather more fantastical and romantic one that you personify do you agree with that i yes i do because i killed them with love yeah he kills him with his fists. <laughs> you you had a consciously slightly comic approach to Bond, though, didn't you, Sir Roger? Your your approach to the character overall, because you thought there was an, a, like a, an absurdity to the character in the Fleming novels. Well, the fact that a, a spy is recognised in every bar in the world, and they immediately see a martini shake and not stir, <laughs> Mr. Bond. You know, how can you be a spy? How oh, comes Bond the spy? I was talking about arguments that you settled years later, uh, earlier on, and I remember a flaming argument that my parents um, had when I was very little about whether Bond had a martini shaken, uh, not stirred, or stirred, not shaken. And my dad was saying, no, 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 he has it stirred, not shaken. My mom was like, what are you talking about? It's steak shaken, not stirred. And they had a huge bust up about it. And... Um, they don't live together anymore. Um, <laughs> that's not the reason. But um, there were too many martinis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was probably the thing. Anyway, I just mentioned that by the by. I'll play you my Bond song now. Okay, I look forward to it. Uh, this is my Quantum of Solace song. Here we go. I've got cars and guns and gadgets I 
I've got ladies with big brains. I've got licenses to kill. I've got licenses to fish. I've got sexy suits and air miles. But here's my biggest wish. I'd like a quantum of solace, but no more than a quantum. I know they do big bags of solace, but I don't want them. I only want a teeny tiny slice of solace before I shoot you. Bottom location chase, bottom location chase, shooting dirty baddies in the busy foreign street. Bottom location chase, bottom location chase, running all around and now I've really hurt my feet. Ow. Sir, Mr. Bond. Yes, hello. Um, you want to stop me? I do want to stop you, yes, but only if it's exciting. I met a lovely lady, but found out she was a rotter. So we exchanged some saucy quips. I snogged her, then I shot her. But I felt quite bad because I'm such a modern complex guy. Sometimes this job gets to you, and maybe that is why. I'd like a quantum of solace, but no more than a quantum. I know they do big bags of solace, but I don't want them. I only want a teeny tiny slice of solace before I shoot you. I think we will meet again, Mr. Bond. Okay. I... <laughs> it's a little drama for you within the song. Well, I think it's absolutely lovely. You miss some obvious rhymes with wits and things like that. But, it's BBC. Uh, but how the devil did get Michael Caine playing Bond? <laughs> <laughs> you thought that was, uh, my, that, was, that was my best Roger Moore in there. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> well, not many people know that. Now, uh, Sir Roger, Roger... Mm. Um, it's been really nice meeting you almost at the end of the show, and uh, oh. I feel frustrated because it took us a while to get over our nerves at meeting you. It's quite overwhelming, and I imagine a lot of people who do meet you do get very tongue-tied and, and uh, starstruck to have someone as iconic as Bond suddenly in front of them, and you, you are... are you, you're talking about me. Yeah, yeah, mm. Joe Cornish. <laughs> uh, do you get a lot of um, nutty fan action? Uh, 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 do you have to be sort of careful sometimes? No, I, but I, you, I, my favourite one is when people say, are you who you think you are? <laughs> yeah. Would you be uh, interested in doing a spin-off Bond film that Adam and I might write? You know, like uh, Sean Connery did Never Say Never. Never Say Never Again. Mm -hmm. If Adam and I were to come up, find some kind of legal loophole and write some kind of uh, Bond film, because I think you're still, you know, you'd still be great. Uh, Harrison Ford is back in there. Everyone's mm. coming back. Yeah. You know, the rules mm. are being broken. Would, would you be up for that? How much? Money. <laughs> right, that's the key question, isn't it? Yeah. We could yeah. do um, 50 or 60 pounds. We'll talk to BBC Worldwide. Well, this is a BBC They've got budget, lots of I money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, good, so that's a yes. Yes, we're yes, on. definitely. All right, listeners, we're, we're going to have to write that film, and, and yeah, good, that's exciting stuff. Um, Roger, uh, thank you so much for coming in. Yes, thank and, you. And uh, we should stress, of course, that your book has been a uh, highly enjoyable read for both of us. Thank you. My Word is My Bond is the title. Um, and you're looking very sexy in there. I, we, we both thought you were fantastic on Jonathan Ross the other mm. day. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you very How much. How was that? We were speculating as to whether, um, what do you, what's it like there when you go on the show? Do you, do you get given like a little drink in the green room there beforehand or? Do no, you... no, there's water. Right. And that's it. Oh no. Oh, that's mine. That's Adam's phone. How disgusting. Isn't that disgusting? Absolutely that is my terrible. wife. Can you believe that? What is she thinking about? What is she? Get Sir Roger to answer, for God's sake. That was a bit unprofessional of that me not to turn the ringer off. Listen, Sir Roger, thanks so much thank for coming you, no, in. Thanks. It's been an absolute honour and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, stop looking at me. I, you, I just freeze up. Because yeah, I'm yeah. so starstruck. Well, you're quite exciting to look at. Well, I know. So it's a dangerous combination. I mean, this sort of television without pictures is. It's, is, it's electrifying, right? Radio. But not yeah. for you. No, yeah, we no. do. We really do appreciate you coming on this show. Because, I think you're uh, either going to kill me or kiss me when you hit me. <laughs> <laughs> That'll kill you Don't if I what kiss to you. Do. <laughs> it's going to be kiss, kiss, bang, bang. You never know where my tongue has been. <laughs> <laughs> well, what a Whoa. superb way to end this week's show. We're, we're going to play you out. What are we playing them out with? 
a uh, bit of Curtis Mayfield, I oh, think. Oh, yeah, this is a bit of recessionary music. This is called Hard Times. But thank you again, Sir Roger. Thanks for listening and texting and emailing and calling. Stay tuned for week. Liz Kershaw. Don't forget, you can download the podcast either tonight or tomorrow at some point, and you can listen to the whole show again on Listen Again or the iPlayer. Thank you very much, listeners. Have a good week. Thank you. See you next week. Roger. And thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.